Today we're reviewing the Ruxu Lithi 216. This is a massive 16 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery for 48 volt systems. It's very similar to an EG4 Power Pro, but it's much cheaper. And it has a lot of the same features, but more capacity. So the Ruxu is $3,299 and it has a 16 kilowatt hour capacity. So the price per kilowatt hour is $206. Now the indoor Power Pro by EG4 it's cheaper than the outdoor rated one. And that thing is $3,299, but it can only store 14.3 kilowatt hours. So the price per kilowatt hour is $230. Now this is not indoor rated, so we really wanna compare it to the outdoor EG4 model. And that battery is behind this battery and it costs $3,599. If you divide that by 14.3 kilowatt hours, it's $251 per kilowatt hour. Also, it has free shipping, which you do not get with EG4 unless they're running a special promotion. They do that sometimes, but this one always has free shipping. Now, first, let's start with the basic features. It is very, very heavy. It is 320 pounds, and it actually comes with some wheels that you can put on the bottom. And I have one right here. This thing is dangerous. Throw these in the trash. These are really high quality wheels, and I really like them, but when you mount them on the bottom of a very top heavy battery, it makes it extremely dangerous. And I actually toppled this thing on the ground. That's why the screen's all scratched up. If you plan to use these, it has to be on a completely flat surface without any cracks at all. And you need to go nice and slow. But in my opinion, you shouldn't even mess with these things. I'm telling you, I went so slow and I still toppled this thing. It's very, very dangerous. But I like this little mechanism on here. It's a really nice wheel. Next, it comes with its own battery cables and you plug them in on the side. And then you can connect it to your system, but I added these lugs. They actually make a quick connect bus bar. And this product did not exist when I received the battery. So I would not use the lugs and I would use the quick connect with this bus bar. Now on the side, we have the main power switch and breaker, the communication ports, and then this little ring right here. And this is very useful if you're trying to mount this thing on a wall. And it allows you to connect ropes or an engine hoist or a chain to this battery so you can lift it up safely. Even to get it out of the box that it comes in, I use this to lift it out because again, this is 320 pounds. So I really like this thing. This allows me to move it much easier. Now this side only has a couple stickers and also another mounting point. So again, if you wanna use an engine hoist or something, you can connect this to the other ring with a rope or a chain and then lift the battery up safely. And the back is entirely sealed. It's a waterproof battery. Now the sides come with some black covers. Now to turn on the screen, you just tap it. Now this green ring is actually a state of charge indicator. Right now we're at 80% and you'll notice that 20% is not illuminated. Now the screen is really nice. We have the voltage, the current, and the total output in kilowatts or input if you're charging quickly. And it shows how many batteries are connected. And you can click on info. And it shows you the status of the BMS, the cell voltages, and the temperatures. And then under settings, you can select which inverter you want to use. And they have lots of inverters here, as you can see. And hopefully in the future, more batteries are like this. I think we should have all batteries work with all inverters. Next, it has an equalization. IQ balance is supposed to balance the batteries faster than usual, or you can do standard balance. I'm gonna keep it on IQ. And then the screen brightness and factory reset. And that's pretty much it, very simple. Smells like China. <laughs> I've had this thing for months. How does it still smell like that? Jeez. I do not like this cable for the screen. So the lid has a waterproof seal. Surprisingly pretty serviceable. We have one, two, three, and four packs and you can remove them. And the balance leads are spot welded to the bus bars. In between the cells, we have the heater pads. And each pack of cells has two heater pads each. So there's eight heater pads total. 
Now the bus bars are quite thick because it's rated for 200 amps continuous. Now where are the temperature sensors? Maybe they're between the cells? Oh, here we go. They look like a balance lead, but it's a temperature sensor that's mounted straight to the bus bar. We have one, two, three, and four. Now the DC rated circuit breaker is huge. These bus bars are connected straight to it. The outside of this circuit breaker is waterproof as well. Now the BMS is tucked in here, but it has some massive ceramic resistors on it. And typically with the server rack batteries, they only have one, but this one has four. Also it has an inductor just like a server rack battery does. So that means it has a DC to DC converter. It can throttle the charge current down to 10 amps. And then all of these wires go out to the screen. I don't think they should have done this, but I probably have a prototype. I don't think they would leave it like this in the production line. Now there's this cable that goes throughout the whole battery pack and it does not connect to the BMS. It actually goes to a fire extinguisher on top of the pack. So this is a pretty cool feature. This BMS, you can actually remove it. If you disconnect the bus bars and then these screws right here, and then pull these plugs in this wire, you can actually swap out the BMS without removing the front cover. And over here we have the pre-charge resistors, and then we have a main fuse rated for 250 amps. This wire powers the BMS, and then these wires turn on the heaters. Then we have the balance cable up here, and this is the screen and the communication wires. And this one's for the state of charge indicator. Now I'm not seeing a name on this BMS, I can't tell who makes it. Now this is a nice design. I wish the server rack batteries and other wall mount batteries actually had this. This makes it very easy to swap out the number one cause of failure in these large batteries. Also, all the larger components, they glued to the board, and the whole board has a conformal coating, which is pretty common nowadays, but it's nice to still see on everything. Now, this build quality is pretty good. It's getting harder and harder to criticize these batteries. Look up my older videos on Ruxu and see how far they've come. They had some of the worst batteries on the market. And now this is one of the best batteries on the market. I would still say a Roy Pow is better than this build quality wise, but it's on par with everything in its price range. This impact driver, the newest fuel from Milwaukee is so good. So as I mentioned earlier, this thing's supposed to communicate with all these different inverters. So I thought, hey, I've got a 6000 XP, let's connect and see if it actually works. So I set the battery to lux power under the settings, and then I ran this communication cable, and this one comes with the 6000 XP. And this is where you connect your inverter communication, at the out. The in connects to the other batteries, so if you have more Ruxu batteries in parallel, you connect those right here. And then on the 6000 XP under setting number 3, I change it to lithium ion, and then I set it to lux power battery, option number 6. And then I turned on the battery and the inverter, I did a power cycle, and it actually connected. It shows the state of charge and the voltage of the Ruxu battery, not the server rack batteries. And now this system has 36 kilowatt hours, so it's a pretty capable system. Now the Ruxu server rack batteries, which are actually behind me right here in this case, these also worked a couple years ago when I first connected it to EG4 inverters. On the first try, it communicated and worked perfectly. I just plugged it in, I didn't change any settings, and it just worked. Now before I did this review, this was connected to my bunker vault and it was connected to a 12k PV and then before that it was connected to my 18k PV with all these other EG4 batteries they were all connected in parallel and that's totally safe to do you can connect them all together the manufacturers will not recommend this and I have an entire video that talks about current sharing for different brand batteries and how to do it safely so if you're a beginner please watch that video but there's no problem connecting this with other brand batteries now the overcurrent protection I've never triggered and when and this was powering my bunker volt, it was the only battery connected to the 12k PV. There was nothing else connected. And every single day for months, I was cycling it very hard with its own array. And still, I haven't been able to trigger the overcurrent protection or any other safety errors or codes. So, so far, it's actually been pretty good. I think it's as good as the Ruxu server rack battery, which I say is the highest quality server rack battery around. And they all work with EG4 inverters, and those are by far the most popular inverter right now. 
Unfortunately, the battery worked really well and I've been using it for months now. So I made a list of downsides. It's not very long, but there are some downsides. First off, the wheels are very dangerous. I would say remove them. No matter how careful you are, even I toppled that thing and I was going very slowly. And that's 320 pounds. If that thing goes on your foot, you're gonna be screwed. And the wheels are connected with a bracket to the bottom of the battery. Remove the bracket and the wheels, and then you can put it onto a hand truck and that's the safest way I found to move it unless you use the lift points with a rope or a chain on the sides and that's the best way to do it also they have a wall mount kit I've never seen it before it just came out but you can bolt that onto a concrete wall and you can lift the batteries onto that there's actually a video on their YouTube channel and I actually like how that is designed all of the other ones you have to kind of line it up and then hang it on there and you can't really see it that well this one is a large shelf so it's very easy to see and if you have a few friends or an engine hoist it makes it very easy to mount these things now if you're mounting an EG4 Power Pro it has a rope connected to the back and so you can lift it up with an engine hoist but it's gonna be tilted a little bit because the rope is in the back plate. On the Ruksu, it's right in the middle, so it's level and hanging down perpendicular. And that makes it easier to mount on the wall or wherever you need to mount it. And I think the weight is probably the biggest downside of these wall mount batteries. If you don't have a flat area and a strong wall to mount them on, and you're mounting these batteries on your own, it can be quite difficult. Now another option is to not mount it on a wall and to mount it on the ground next to a wall Wall and just secure it to the wall so it doesn't tip over. And in my bunker vault, that's what I'm doing for all of my batteries, and it works great. Next, Ruxu is a company, if you look at my older videos, they've done some very silly stuff. The design choices they had on their 12 volt batteries was horrendous. And I have tons of batteries talking about what they said, how they fixed it, the new designs, and how those failed. They even had BMS heat sinks connected directly to cells. And some of the worst build quality around, but ever since they came out with the server rack battery, which I think is made by a different company because it's so freaking good. Now something that makes me wonder is the prices of these things are incredible, but the tariffs are coming. When you buy from Ruxu, it's direct from China. The warehouses that distribute, the people that you talk to on the phone for customer service and support, it's all China. None of that is owned by a United States entity. And same is true for all the 12 volt batteries as well. So I'm wondering what's going to happen once these tariffs hit. If the tariffs do kill off these companies, will you still be able to get customer service and support? I'm not sure. Or will the Chinese batteries still be cheaper even with the tariffs attached? Because the Chinese are getting better and better at making these batteries. And I'm not really sure what going to happen, but it's happening soon. Next, the power switch is kind of strange. When I press it, sometimes it turns off. If I hold it, sometimes it does. I don't know. I just keep pressing it until it turns on or until it turns off, but it's a funky switch. I can't think of anything else here. The server rack Ruxu batteries are fantastic, and the case that they come in is better than anything else I've seen on the market. And so far, the design for their wall mount is pretty much just as good. Also, it's not a new release. This thing's been on the market for quite some time, and there's people running these every single day. So overall, pretty good. If you guys have problems with this battery, please share it on the forum. Post a video. Show any issues that you have with this thing, because so far, the new Ruxus are really good batteries. But please watch my older videos, they're hilarious. I, I just watched them this morning and I was laughing my butt off. I found a million things wrong with them. So yeah, check those out if you want. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Also check out the forum, diysolarforum.com. There's been so many good discussions on there and lots of people talking, so check it out. All right, I'll see you in the next video, bye.